We have already seen that a number of punctuation characters have a special meaning in the shell command line syntax. Um, <clears throat> some of these are part of the shell control syntax. For example, the semicolon is used to separate commands that are to be executed in sequence. The less than and greater than signs are used for file redirects. And we've seen the uh, pipe symbol as well as the uh, logical OR and logical AND operation uh, for conditional execution. There's lots more punctuation characters that have a special meaning. In particular, there are a number that perform convenient substitution before the command line arguments are handed over to the program that's being called. <clears throat> so in this video, we are going to look at some of these substitutions called the brace expansion, the tilde expansion, parameter expansion, path name expansion, and quote removal. Brace expansion is a convenience mechanism that gives you kind of a distributive law over concatenation uh, to um, produce a sequence of words that all have something in common. So for example, if you want to type in ABE, ACE, ADE, then they all have a common prefix, a common suffix, and only the bit in the middle uh, changes. Wouldn't it be nice if you could kind of factor out the common prefix and the common suffix? And that's exactly what brace expansion allows you to do. Um, if you write A and then in brace B, C, D uh, and followed by E, then this actually expands to three words on the command line that all start with A, all end with E, and have B, C, and D in the middle. And you can use that several times in a single word. So if you had here, for example, another three um, words in brace, then you would end up with three times three, uh, nine words already. A common application for this is if you uh, compactly want to write down, <clears throat> for example, the email addresses of several people that all have a common suffix such as, as at camac -ac. you just write their CRS IDs in this uh, curly brace notation and the shell will automatically expand it like this. And this is the reason why you find, for example, under the list of authors in scientific papers quite often uh, this notation as a shortcut. This is this sort of uh, notational folklore uh, that comes from familiarity with the Unix shell. Likewise, there may be, um, if you use, for example, the, the LaTeX tool to uh, compile a set of slides, then it leaves a number of auxiliary files in your directory. If you want to delete all of these, the brace expansion is quite convenient to select all of these files. The brace expansion isn't actually standardized in the POSIX standard. It's an extension that's specific to the uh, GNU bash shell. And these extensions are sometimes also known as uh, bashisms. The term came up when Ubuntu Linux decided for performance reason to replace the uh, bin sh command, which is uh, the shell interpreter used to execute uh, many uh, shell scripts by another one that starts up a little bit faster called dash and that lacks some of these bash extensions. Another expansion uh, is known as the tilde expansion. You can easily refer to your own home directory with the tilde character on its own. That will be replaced by the absolute path name of your home directory. You can also refer to other users' home directory by following tilde with their username. This will be expanded into the user's home directory. And if there's just a tilde at the start of a path name, then again, this will be expanded into your own home directory or followed by a username by someone else's home directory, and then will uh, continue as specified here. I've used here the echo command. Uh, what the echo command does is it just reads the list of 
command line arguments and then it outputs them separated by a space to standard output. So that's an easy to use a tool to help you understand how command line expansion works, but it's also used as a simple print command in shell scripts, for example. The shell also has uh, variables. You can just assign variable name equals some string. And then if you want to refer to these variables in a command line, uh, just use a dollar sign followed by curly braces. And inside these curly braces, put the variable. So you can see here, uh, echo object file here uh, is substituted by the shell with the value of that um, variable. There is an entire string modification syntax uh, where you can, um, for example, uh, remove prefixes or suffixes or insert default values or do a number of other processing operations on these variable names. I'm not going to list all of them here. You find them in the bash man page. But as one example, I show here that if you append a percent sign to the variable name, then the shell will remove whatever follows the percent sign, the dot O here from the value of the variable um, if it appears. So this way we can strip off one suffix and then we can expand it, uh, attach another one. These um, variable references can occur in the middle of a word. So you can immediately write letters before or as in this example afterwards. Um, here's another example, three uh, shell variables uh, that the shell sets by default to tell you where your home directory is. Um, and we'll talk about what path is um, in one of the following videos and uh, log name is the name under which you have logged in. Uh, there's also something called command expansion that allows you to uh, insert the standard output of a command into a command line. As an example, let's have a look at the which command. The which command uh, looks at where a particular command is located. So if you uh, just type in a command such as emacs, then uh, the shell will look in the path variable, which contains a colon separated list of directories. And it will look in one after another of these until it finds a command that matches that name. And in this case, emacs was found under user bin and which tells us where this command would have been uh, loaded from, namely from slash user slash bin slash emacs. And if we now want to use that output of the which command directly in the command line of another command, then we can uh, use this command and put around it um, round parenthesis and put a dollar sign in front of it. And then this which emacs here um, command will be called and its output user bin emacs will be inserted into the command line here. And this is how the ls command uh, can show you, for example, the metadata of the emacs command. And again, here, the echo command, uh, just to show what, how the output of this command here is inserted into the command line and then printed by the echo command. Um, <clears throat> for both the parameter and the command expansion, there exists uh, shorter alternatives. If you don't want to do any processing and if the variable name is not immediately followed by another letter that couldn't be distinguished uh, otherwise from the uh, where the variable name ends then you can just put a dollar sign in front of the variable name and that also does uh, parameter substitution and instead of the dollar sign and the round parenthesis you can also use the grave accent uh, character, which on some older fonts occasionally also looks like a back quote, even though this back quote has now been replaced by a proper dedicated Unicode character for the back quote. <clears throat> 
if a command line argument contains a question mark, a star, or square brackets, then uh, these are interpreted as a uh, simple form of a regular expression pattern. You may remember uh, regular expressions from lectures on uh, finite state machine theory uh, that allow you to um, specify a pattern of file names and if there are any matching file names in the current working directory then they will be substituted these patterns will be substituted with a list of all matching file names and in this <clears throat> pattern syntax these wildcard characters here um, the question mark stands for an arbitrary single character the star stands for an arbitrary sequence of zero or more characters and the uh, square brackets stand for one single character out of a specified set so for example if you write uh, in square bracket a to z capital a to capital z lowercase a to lowercase z then this entire expression here represents one either uppercase or lowercase character in the range a to z um, if you write star dot back that just refers to all files that end with the extension dot back um, this uh, expression here as mentioned is an uppercase or lowercase letter followed by zero or more additional letters followed by a full stop followed by an extension or a suffix of exactly three characters there's an add-on notation inside that was added by the POSIX standard inside these square brackets if you put colons and then between colons the name of a character class for example alphanumeric characters or alphabetic characters then a character of this entire class is referred here um, so the the outer square brackets here is still to indicate um, everything in here is a set of characters from which this one character is then taken and you can either list the characters themselves or you can again add square bracket colons in order to refer to a class of characters you can negate the set uh, so this is one character with all possible characters except uppercase a to uppercase z and none of these uh, will match a dot at the start of a file name so if you have a star for example then you will only get the visible uh, file names only if you type dot star then you will get the invisible file names um, <clears throat> one of the big mistakes i made when i was an undergraduate student and was given as part of a uh, job i had at the university um, administrative privileges over a widely used computer uh, was i wanted to delete all files in a directory and i knew the command rm minus r would delete all the files that i specify as well as recursively delete all the subdirectories um, that i've listed so i first wrote rm star or rm minus r star and that deleted all the visible files but it didn't delete any of the uh, files that started with a dot character so i made a big mistake i wrote rm minus r dot star why was this a mistake well one of the files that was uh, matched uh, rm by rm dot star is the dot dot directory which is the parent directory so unintentionally the rm command or the the shell that expanded this list actually went up to the parent directory and gave all the siblings of the current directory to the rm minus r command as command line arguments and the rm minus r command did what is meant to do it recursively deleted everything so i accidentally deleted from 
one directory level higher that I wanted. And then I had to spend the rest of the day uh, recovering these files from backups, which fortunately were available. But this was quite disruptive, so be careful. Um, <clears throat> one way of not uh, expanding dot dot is if you write something like dot question mark question mark star, then you can make sure that there are at least uh, files where there are two additional characters after the dot uh, selected and then you do the expansion and this is one way of avoiding um, that pitfall. Another possibility is you can use the ls minus capital A command which lists all the uh, files including the invisible files but excluding the dot and the dot dot file and then you can use command substitution to hand over those file names. The path name expansion actually works not only in the current working directory, but it also works inside paths. So if you write something like files slash star slash star dot o, then this will actually match all the path names that f start with files, then have an arbitrary sequence of characters as a file name except a slash is not allowed here so this is remains within a single directory level and it will pick out all the subdirectories of files that's enforced by the next slash and then in all the subdirectories of the subdirectory files it will select all the characters uh, all the files that end with a suffix dot o so from this notation here, I think you can already see that this is actually an extremely powerful tool and like all powerful tools, use very carefully. So what if you have a file name or a URL that contains any of these uh, special characters? How can you suppress the uh, meaning of a special uh, shell character or a so-called meta character? And there is uh, three quoting mechanisms where you can uh, pass on characters as they are. The first one is if you enclose any sequence of characters on the command line shell with single quotation mark, then between those single quotation marks, all characters lose their meaning as a special character. Um, that of course doesn't work if inside here you have another single quotation mark so you will have to work around that somehow. Um, <clears throat> sometimes you want to suppress most special characters but some of them like the dollar sign are actually quite useful because you can do parameter substitution. Um, that's what the double quotation marks are for. They suppress the special meaning of all characters except for the dollar sign, the backslash and the graph accent and the backslash character suppresses all special character meanings just for the one immediately following character. So as an example if I want to hand over uh, three dollar signs I can put them in single quotation marks or if I want to hand over uh, a lot of stars and space characters and something that looks like a variable reference, then I can do this uh, with a quotation mark, with double quotation marks, except the, the uh, variable reference here will actually be expanded because the uh, dollar sign is um, one of the special characters that preserve their meaning. If I wanted here to actually hand over the dollar sign as a character, I can prefix it with a backslash character. Um, so what happens if you have a, a string uh, where there is a single quotation mark inside? Um, let's have a quick look. If I have a line like echo abc for example uh, that just outputs that word and I can put that in single quotation marks. Um, I can also just put part of the word in, in single quotation marks. And if I wanted, for example, to put ABC 
or if I have a single quotation mark in the middle of my word, I can put a backspace around it. I can put, oops, I can put double quotation marks around it. I can even put single quotation marks around the first letter, then double quotation marks about the middle character, and again, single quotation marks around the last letter. So these, uh, you can uh, mix and match all of these uh, quotation uh, mechanism in a uh, single word even. Um, understanding these quotation mechanisms is extremely important uh, for security reasons. For example, if you're handing over a string that you have received from an untrustworthy source, for example, someone um, passes, someone untrusted passed you a string, for example, by filling out a web form and you want to hand over that string uh, to a shell command line, then you have to be extremely careful that you have scanned for all possible uh, shell meta characters in that string or restricted the subset of uh, characters that you allow uh, to exclude all possible shell characters or you use a function that carefully escapes any meta characters such that uh, someone can't abuse this and uh, modify your shell command line by uh, inserting such meta characters. So whenever you learn a new language that has special characters, one of the very first questions you should ask is, how can I deactivate these special characters and how can I enter them? And if you write any application where you hand over strings, always test them by putting at least all the ASCII characters from space to tilde into a, into a test string and check whether anything unusual happens with this test string. <laughs>